O Lord, mercifully receive the prayers of your people who call upon you and grant that they may know and understand what things they ought to do and also may have grace and power faithfully to accomplish them. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, it is good to be back. As uh, all of you should know, and for those of our Church of Emmanuel USA family that don't, um, on June 30th, uh, just a few weeks ago, I was officially ordained, consecrated, and, uh, well, ordained and consecrated <laughs> as the bishop for our diocese, for uh, our diocese here in California. Uh, we are in full communion with the Worldwide Anglican Church, for which we are extraordinarily uh, blessed and grateful. And then, of course, uh, being founded in 2013 as an autonomous church, uh, we are also privileged to function as the province, the West Coast province of the Worldwide Anglican Church here in North America. So uh, as far as the province goes, I am the presiding bishop as well. Uh, I want to give um, just, there are no words to show adequate gratitude for my consecration as bishop, but I would be remiss if I did not thank the three awesome men of God who served as my co-consecrators um, to the Episcopacy. And those wonderful men of God are uh, initially bishop, but uh, shortly before my consecration as a bishop, he was elevated to archbishop. And that is the most reverend Dr. Elijah Arak of the Worldwide Anglican Church in South Sudan. And then we also want to give our gratitude to the Right Reverend Dr. Jan Verdestadt, also of the Worldwide Anglican Church. And last but certainly not least, I want to give gratitude to my new friend and fellow Pentecostal brother, the Right Reverend Virgil Taylor. And so um, these wonderful men of God served as the co-consecrators and our chief consecrator was none other than our very own worldwide Anglican church matriarch, the most reverend Dr. Christine Mercy Johnson. So uh, I am simply uh, overwhelmed with gratitude and joy for these three men of God and our very own matriarch for uh, facilitating my ordination and consecration to the Episcopacy. And so the Church of Emmanuel USA is extremely grateful and I uh, will do my absolute best to serve with honor and, and uh, integrity. So with that um, being said, I also want to apologize uh, as well as update everyone about the situation, the, uh, the, the regional emergency that we've had here uh, in our cathedral city of Ridgecrest, California, um, here in the Diocese of California. We, uh, it's been all of the news. Uh, we have been literally rocked with earthquakes. <laughs> Ironically, since I have returned, almost from the day I have returned, from my consecration as a bishop to uh, our diocese here in California, um, beginning July 4th, we, we got hit with a, a, a pretty bad earthquake. And then uh, the following day, another earthquake, uh, 7.1 on the Richter scale. And uh, we've been experiencing aftershocks intermittently. 
ever since. So I do want to say that here, while here in Ridgecrest, the damage has been fairly minimal. Uh, to my knowledge, there have been no uh, human fatalities. There have been uh, several homes and businesses that uh, have been red tagged, as it were, where uh, they, they're not going to be able to continue to live or work in those buildings. But again, that's, to my knowledge, there have been no human fatalities. And so we are relatively unscathed here in Ridgecrest. However, there has been significant damage in some other areas, such as Toronto, California and Bakersfield, California. So please keep those folks lifted up in your prayers, as I certainly will, um, as the diocesan bishop here in California. Um, with that being said, that uh, there have not been, uh, I do apologize that there have not been any uh, sermons online for uh, folks who are not here in the Diocese of California to listen to. Um, of course, June 30th, I was out, and so very shortly we should be able to um, upload uh, our live stream for the consecration. To, uh, did not manage to get up in time, so I want to upload a recording of uh, the consecration that happened on June 30th, and you're going to get to hear from our very own matriarch, the most reverend Dr. Christine Mercy Johnson herself. She's a wonderful preacher, a wonderful uh, archbishop, uh, just a wonderful woman of God, and, and she preached a powerful sermon uh, entitled, Do You Love Me? And so I uh, look forward to, to hearing that. We're going to get that uploaded to the website as soon as possible. Um, and then, uh, as I said, other than that, there have not been any sermons uh, uploaded simply because uh, we have been recovering from the, the earthquake. And so uh, please forgive us, but we'll try to kind of get things moving in the right direction uh, as soon as possible. So with that, with all the preliminaries out of the way, um, I've taken enough time uh, <laughs> with that. Uh, tonight, or Today, we're going to be preaching on a message entitled Surprising Grace. Surprising Grace. Now, the thing about grace is by definition, it is unmerited. There's nothing that you can do to earn grace. It's 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 free. It's 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 a uh, 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 unearned, amen. And so, the gospel reading that we heard today was uh, the parable of the good Samaritan, as it is best known as it as it is often called the, the parable. Of the Good Samaritan, and what I want to do today, I, I don't want to be before you alone, um, as I kind of want to walk you through the epiphany that I came to as I was preparing the sermon for this week. <laughs> so, so you literally get to just kind of be in the bishop's head and, and kind of see what it's like to write a sermon. Is that all right? So here's what happened. Uh, uh, as you know, in the Anglican tradition, we we don't just read a passage of scripture, but we read uh, with the rest of the church, we read a, a, a uh, cross section of scripture uh, each week. And so we typically have an Old Testament reading, a reading from the Psalms, uh, a, a New Testament reading specifically, um, or generally speaking at least, something from the epistles of Paul, um, sometimes the book of uh, Acts, uh, things like that. Uh, and then always, always, always we have a gospel reading so that we can learn about the life and ministry, the death, the resurrection, the ascension, and the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so uh, our gospel reading, um, you know, is, is about this, this parable of the Good Samaritan. And as I was kind of cross-referencing that with the other readings, there was this idea of, you know, we as Christians, we really need to get it right. Amen. And, and of course, that's absolutely true. We, we, do, we need to get it right. Um, and when I say get it right, I mean the fruit of good works. You see, uh, as I was reading the passages that went with, uh, you know, the sign readings for this week, 
the 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 uh, prosperity gospel preacher deep down inside of me, because uh, I do have one somewhere right here. Uh, I, I hate to admit, but um, the prosperity gospel preacher deep down inside of me was was rising up, and and it was such an easy target, folks, because the scriptures that we read this week were talking about prosperity. And, and blessings and riches and 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 the readings we're talking about uh, even in our gospel reading uh, when you look at the parable of the Good Samaritan it is essentially not only this but at its most basic level it's a story about the use of money we have this Good Samaritan uh, who not only gives his time to this wounded person on the road who has been uh, uh, beaten and robbed, right? He not only gives his time, but the Good Samaritan is good partly because he actually gave of his money. He put this this uh, robbery victim up in the end at his own expense. The Good Samaritan reached into his own pocket, took from his own money, and said, "Hey, you know what?" I'm going to pay for this guy to, to, to recover here in your end because he's been beaten and robbed. And 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 and, and essentially what he says to the innkeeper, what the Good Samaritan says to the innkeeper is, whatever it costs you to take care of this guy, I will repay you. You take care of him and I will take care of you. That's what the Good Samaritan says. So, so you know, it was real tempting to... to to preach a prosperity message and and, 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 I, and i'll tell you what as i was thinking about it, i said man i don't want my first sermon my first recorded sermon as a bishop i don't want it to be about money <laughs> i said that that's 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 just that's just gonna send the wrong message that's not the kind of bishop i am amen and so i said no 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 i, I can't do that i can't go there again even though this is a true thing it, it is absolutely true that if you take care of God's business, God will take care of your business, amen? It is true that if you give, it shall be given to you. Press down, shaking together, running over. Okay? And all of that is true, but that's not the message we're preaching today. You see, as I was pouring over the scriptures this week, a funny thing happened. I, every hermeneutic bone in my body wanted to read the story, the parable of the Good Samaritan and put myself in the story as the Good Samaritan. Oh, don't, don't judge me. You, you do it too. Every time you read the story of the Good Samaritan, you imagine yourself, I imagine myself as the Good Samaritan. You say to yourself, and I say to myself, yes, if it were me walking down the side of the road and I seen this man bloody and broken and bruised, having been robbed and left for dead, everything in you, everything in me as a Christian, as a born again, blood washed, spirit filled believer says that you and I would help that man, that we would help that person and yet here is the reality my sisters and brothers many of us perhaps even most of us we're not the good Samaritan in this story we're not even the person that was beaten and left for dead by the robbers. No, most of, uh, many of us, if not most of us, we are the priest, or perhaps in my case, the bishop. We are the Levite in this story who has saw our sister or our brother in need and we have walked on the other side. We have turned away from our sister and our brother who was in need. Perhaps
perhaps it was economically we had money to give and we chose to be stingy and close our hands. Perhaps it was emotional support. We saw that someone was going through something and instead of offering a word of encouragement, we simply walked away. Perhaps it was a, 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 a ministry in need of volunteers and even though we had the time, we refused to make the time to serve. Whatever it is, many of us, most of us, we're not the Good Samaritan. We're not even the victim. We are the priest and the Levite who walked on the other side. That was the surprising revelation that I got as I was reading this parable, as I was preparing this message. I, and I kept trying to force <clears throat> my, excuse me, I kept trying to force my interpretation of the story to fit what was actually there. That I was the Good Samaritan, that most of us are the Good Samaritan. But as I read on, I realized we're not. You're not. I'm not. More often than not, we are not the Good Samaritan. We're the ones who walk on the other side. And so, <clears throat> as this uh, became apparent to me, I, 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 I began to be overwhelmed with, with, with. I almost want to say guilt, but it didn't quite make it into guilt. It, it stayed where it belonged, and that was conviction. You see, condemnation is of the devil, and it pushes us away from God. Conviction is of the Holy Spirit, and it pushes us toward God. And so as I was reading the story, <clears throat> and, I, and, 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 I, and I began to be overwhelmed with the realization, the surprising and shocking revelation that I was the priest who walked on the other side. That many of those who would be listening to this sermon were the priest and the Levite who walked on the other side. I said, God, well, what hope is there? We're supposed to be the light of the world and the salt of the earth. We're supposed to be the good guys. If we fail to do good works, if we fail to tend to the poor and needy, then what hope is there? And it was at that moment of despair, my sisters and brothers, as I was pouring over the scriptures. And I, I declare to you, I did not read this in the commentary, although I'm sure if I went and studied a few, uh, I'd find this. But in that moment of desperation, as I was pouring over the scriptures, it was the Holy Spirit that revealed this to me, this surprising revelation. For the second time, and that was the identity of the Good Samaritan. You see, we are not the Good Samaritan. The lawyer who kicks off this whole parable, who tries to challenge Jesus, the Bible says that this lawyer wanted, it says he wanted to justify himself. He wanted to be the Good Samaritan, just like you and I. When we read the story, we want to be the Good Samaritan. We want to be the hero of our own story. We want to justify ourselves, just like the lawyer who is trying to trick Jesus. But see, Jesus cannot be tricked any more than he can be tempted. Uh, it, it just won't work. Amen. And so the revelation, the surprising revelation was this. The identity of the Good Samaritan is not you and I. The identity of the Good Samaritan is Christ himself. Christ is the Good Samaritan. Now, before you go and cry heresy, now wait a minute, Bishop. 
Bishop Parker, how can Jesus be the good Samaritan when Jesus was by ethnicity a Jew? <laughs> See, Jesus in his classic fashion, he, he, he takes expectations and turns them on their head. See, the story is not about ethnicity. See, even in that, I, I started to preach a, a, a politically correct message about, you know, how we uh, uh, Jesus calls us all to 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 uh, not be racist and prejudiced against uh, ethnic, ethnic minorities. You know, obviously, that's a message that means a lot to me as, a, as an African-American man. But again, I, I, I couldn't do it, folks. This this message is not about ethnicity. It's about identity. The identity of the Good Samaritan is Christ himself. Let me show you. So here we are in the story where the Good Samaritan at this point has already dropped off the robbery victim. He's already paid two denarii to the innkeeper. And so this is what the Good Samaritan says to the innkeeper. The Good Samaritan says, take care of him and when I come back I will repay you whatever more you spend now if you understand salvation history if you understand the acts the mighty acts of God in Christ Jesus you understand that there is only one to whom we look forward to coming back. There's only one whom scripture says is going to return in the clouds and that his reward will be in his hand. That's Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ says to you unto I, do the good works. Tend to the poor and the needy, the broken and the bruised. Whatever you offer them, whatever you give for, to them, whatever you sacrifice for them, I will repay you. You see, when I started this Bible study and when I started this sermon, there was there was uh, conviction. There was even just a twinge of condemnation creeping in the shadows. Because I realized I am not the Good Samaritan. You, you're not the Good Samaritan. And so that was a surprising revelation, shocking truth. But I thank God that in the end, when I recognize that Jesus is the Good Samaritan, Jesus is the one who tends to the sick and the lame, the hurt and the broken, I realize that for the surprising revelation of what I am not, there is the surprising grace of what Jesus is. Jesus is the Good Samaritan. Jesus is the good shepherd. Jesus is the great God. Jesus is the giver of life and of surprising grace. Amen.